We've got a head-to-head -head matchup. We're comparing 15 of the most popular gaming chairs versus 15 of the most popular office chairs. Who's gonna top this tier list? Let's jump into it. Kicking things off with the flagship chair from Steelcase, the gesture. Historically, this is a chair that I've consistently ranked in the B, B plus tier just because I think the seat is a little bit too thin and it feels like I'm sliding out of the chair a little bit, but it does have crazy flexibility and it does have good support overall. And recently we got the model with the headrest and I think it's the best headrest out of any high-end chair. So I'm actually pushing the gesture to A minus. Yeah, the gesture is one of those chairs that definitely upgraded with that headrest. It's without question one of the best on office chairs and gaming chairs. I think it does boost the score for me as well, but I still cannot get out of the B tier. I'm going B plus. And that headrest makes this an A tier chair for me. I also just love the backrest. Has a little bit more of a curved contour. It's going to be a low A. The Secret Lab Titan Evo. This is a real quality chair, guys. Actually, it should be F tier, but there's worse chairs, so I can't put it in the F tier. There's so much not to like about this, including the rock hard seat, the arms that don't fit me. I don't know. There's not much to love about this except for the memory foam on the pillow. I'm going to go D tier. I'm not going to be quite as harsh as Greg. I'm actually going to give this a C. I think that the seat is firm, the backrest is firm, but it does have the softer bolsters so you can still move around a bit in the seat so C for me. Yes, it does have soft side bolsters, but the middle portion where you actually put your butt the whole time is rock hard. I cannot sit in this seat. The dimensions don't fit me because of the lack of the seat depth and the arm adjustments aren't very good. Super rigid. I'm at a D plus with this one and we're at a D overall. Next up, the Hayworth Soji. This is a chair that I've always said is comfortable all around. There's really no problems with this chair for me. It fits me well, even at six foot two. Nice arms, nice seat. The backrest mesh is really nice as well. So this is going to be a B. Yeah, I'm going to be right there with Robert. I'm going to be at a B as well. This is, for me, just a prototypical, good, well-rounded chair for around $500. Nothing super fancy, but nothing that's going to make you hate the chair. So overall, I like everything about it. The Hayworth Soji is just the epitome of an above-average chair. Most people are going to really like this one. The arms aren't uncomfortable. The seat isn't uncomfortable. Backrest, same weight. All of those are maybe a touch firm, but again, it's going to be a good chair for all-day comfort. And again, it's just going to be above-average. I'm going B tier as well. B overall. We've got a brand new gaming chair that you guys have asked a lot about, which is the Fractal Refine. Now, I gave it a glowing review in my first impressions, but after getting to sit in this one for a period of time, I must say that the seat is pretty firm, so firm that it kind of made my butt go numb after about an hour, which is a shame because I do like everything else about the chair. The headrest is really nice. The arms are really nice. The recline is really nice, but I can't get it above a C plus because of that seat. Now I've sat in the longest, I've sat in it well over a week. I have been trying so hard to get this seat to break in. It absolutely will not. And so while there's a bunch of things that are improved over a lot of gaming chairs, it's just another one of those gaming chairs that's getting closer and closer to being really good. But unfortunately the seat and that backrest being way too vertical without a natural curve in it, I'm going C minus on this one. It also just has a small seat. So for my long legs, I'm hanging far off the front edge of the seat and the back, it is very flat. It does have a lumbar system but doesn't necessarily feel great so we'd kind of like to try out that mesh back to see if that's better so still going to be a high c for me averages out to a c get your leaps get your leaps at btod.com 50 percent off and you're going to get a 12-year warranty with free returns btod.com back to the list the Steelcase Leap is up now, and I'm telling you, this is one of the best chairs on the market for most people, including myself. I kind of fit right in the middle here, being six feet tall at about 180 pounds. The armrests are incredible. The lumbar is one of the best in the business, and it fits me great. I love the movement in it for the old Russian twist. I'm going A+. I just love the flexibility in the Leap. You can really move around both the seat and the backrest. You don't see that in a lot of chairs, and I do still really like the seat. I, I do prefer the Amiya a little bit, so that's why this stays in an A for me. The Leap is my go-to chair, my number one chair. It has what I believe to be the most comfortable seat for me, the most comfortable backrest other than potentially the fern that I'm sitting in now. And I also love the arms. Historically, I've discounted it a little bit because it doesn't have a recline similar to like the Aeron or Embody, but it still has a good recline. And due to it just being so comfortable in the seat back and arms, I'm pushing this one up to S tier, but it's going to finish in the A tier overall. Herman Miller Vantum. This is a chair specifically designed to be a gaming chair by Herman Miller. So the problem for me is this is it's just another chair is way too small. I can't even fit in this chair to really give it a proper rating, but I do like the headrest if I could fit in this chair better and I'll give it a low C. Yeah, I'm going to be right there with Robert. I have a tough time with this chair just because, like he said, the dimensions don't fit great. The seat depth is really short, and even when you pull it all the way out, it doesn't fix anything. It's too small for me at 5'9". The armrests are pretty good. I do like the backrest, like Robert said. The headrest isn't bad. I don't like the upper back support thing that they added. But overall, it's a pretty comfortable chair, a little firm in the seat for me. But those dimensions really kind of kill it, so I'm going to be at a C tier. 
I think the biggest issue for me is not only does it not fit me, it doesn't fit a wide range of people with such a tiny little seat. I honestly can't tell who it would fit well. It's got to be such a small segment of the population. And for that price, this is so ridiculously overpriced for such a tiny little sliver of people that can use it. I'm going D tier, C minus overall. The Kalami Atlas has been my go-to pick for a chair for under $300, but it's tough for me to elevate this out of the C tier, even though I do recommend it so much, just because the seat is a little bit small, a little bit firm, and the armrests don't always come back the way that you want them to, especially if you go all the way back in the recline. And so I'm going to be at a C plus for this one, but still very good for the price. Yeah, I mean, this thing has a ton of adjustments, basically every adjustment that you would want, and some intuitive features like a sliding seat that uses a knob, which I think is really advanced for where this is in the overall category. For me, I think it's a low B just because when you compare it against everything around it, it's really a lot better and most people will find it to be quite comfortable. So B minus for me. For me, it's really that backrest that has a really nice curve in it, fits in your lumbar area, and I do like the headrest as well. The arms are a little bit sliding around, and we've heard that complaint from other people too. So it's going to be a still a high C, and it's going to average at a C plus. The S Racer is as far as you can be from S tier. This is your traditional bucket style gaming chair, hard side bolsters, small seat, awkward lumbar, everything's using stretchy elastic. The arms don't adjust the way you need them to. This is for kids who don't care about their back, neck, or any part of their body. Guys, everybody here gives it an F tier. The Tacova is a $150 office chair. Same price about as the S Racer, but you can see the difference here between office and gaming. For $150, you're getting way better comfort. I know we're not talking about price, but this really highlights the difference between what you get with a gaming chair and an office chair. Yeah, when we look at the Tacova, what you're gaining over a chair like the S Racer, you get an open backrest, so you don't have the side bolsters. It's flexible. You've actually got a real integrated lumbar system with an adjustable headrest. You've got a good recline instead of the center tilt, like on those really low-end chairs. And you actually get a comfortable seat and a comfortable arm package. So I'm going to be at a C tier with the Tacova. This chair is definitely usable for people, and they can be comfortable. It's just how long will it hold up? I don't know, but it's going to be C tier for comfort. C overall. The Asus Destrier is a high-end gaming chair that's modeled more after an ergonomic chair, so I do like the design choice there. The problem that I have is that the lumbar is really aggressive, even when you dial it back, and I don't love the mesh seat, even though it does have high-quality mesh, so I'm still going to have to keep this at a C+. I had high hopes for this chair when it came in. Unfortunately, like Ryan said, it's another one of those mesh seats that I just absolutely can't sit in. I also think the armrests are a little bit cumbersome to use, especially in full recline. I got to go D tier. I think the problem with that mesh seat is they put in this pad at the front edge, creates kind of this weird crease that's uncomfortable. They also added the bump in the arm pads, the feature that everyone keeps adding, but I don't know if anyone actually needs it, so I don't like how that feels. This is going to be a C for me. It averages out to a low C. The Steelcase Amiya is one of my two all-time favorite chairs. It has the four-way arm adjustment that's just become an absolute gold standard in armrests. The lumbar for me is perfect. I love how the actual seat moves and how that seat comfort hits. It's just a little bit better than the Leap, in my opinion. I'm going S tier for the Amiya. Love that Amiya seat. To me, it's an S tier seat. Pair that with A tier arm pads and then a really nice backrest. Doesn't quite have the lumbar support that the Leap has, so I give it a little downgrade there. Still going to be an A tier for me. Yeah, the Amiya is a great chair. Amazing arm pads for me. They're going to be S tier arms. It's got an A or an S tier seat and the backrest is going to be A tier. Not quite as good of a recline as some really high end chairs similar to the Leaps problem, but I do like the Leap seat a little bit better and I like the Leaps flexibility a little better than the Amiya. So I have to downgrade the Amiya, but it's still A tier for me and it's going to be an A tier overall. The Lenovo Legion. The only thing I can really say good about this is I do think the styling is kind of cool, but we're talking about comfort here. So we don't get any points there. And the headrest could be comfortable, but it doesn't want to stay in place. So I have nothing else good to say about it, unfortunately. F tier. The problem with this chair is that they didn't really hit on any of the good points of going with an ergonomic chair design over a bucket seat racing style chair. The seat is very uncomfortable with the front edge lip design just digging into the back of your legs. It's also very firm. The arms with the weird raised lip around the back also ruins it for me. So I'm going to be right there with Robert. Unfortunately, this is going to be an F tier chair for me just because I simply cannot use this thing. Two things for sure. I agree completely with Ryan on that. Seat pads unsittable and the armrests are unusable. So easy F tier. F tier overall. The Eurotech Vera has been a chair that I've gone back and forth with for a long time on how to score this thing just because I think that the seat is S tier and I think the back is S tier. The arms just don't do it for me though. They're a little bit firm. I don't like the slidey rounded edges and they don't go low enough for me to use the way that I want at my desk. But overall, this is a very comfortable chair, especially for the price. I'm going to be at a B plus. 
Yeah, the Vera chair is one of those ones that it's going to definitely be a personal preference here, but I think for what you're getting, I actually fit the armrest, and like Ryan, I love that backrest. That seat, like he said, is really comfortable. And again, this is an easy A tier for me. So I love the built-in lumbar curve in the Vera's backrest. Fits in my lumbar region just perfectly. For me, the biggest problem is, like Ryan said, I just wish those arms went a lot lower. This might be partly a preference thing, maybe based on your desk setup a little bit, but for me, that brings it down to a B. So we're going to average at a high B. The Gamer Gear from Walmart is a fresh, new, hot opportunity if you're looking for a gaming chair right around that $100 price point. We don't consider price points, and thank goodness, because this chair has a lot going for it. Unfortunately, I don't like anything from it. It's got a weird sliding back angle tilt feature thing. I don't know what you call it. The armrest, my kids would love to spread Cheeto dust all over those because they're soft and they're going to be gross in a short amount of time. No real redeeming qualities about this except for maybe you can get it at your local Walmart. I'm going F plus though because there's worse chairs than it in the list we got a lot of problems here it has kind of a super straight up back so you have to lock it in like a little bit of a back position for me i had to move the back height up which is an interesting adjustment but it didn't really want to stay but that's the only way i could make the headrest work so i'll stop there and say f these gaming chairs make us probably have to think about adding another tier below f tier because it's tough to put some of these chairs in the same category but this is definitely an f tier chair and it's f overall the Herman Miller sale has a comfortable seat, in my opinion. doesn't look super thick, but it does have some nice padding, has some flexibility in that backrest. For me, the chair is just a little too small, so I have to rate this down to a B-. minus. For me, the sale fits me pretty well. It still does have a pretty short backrest, so I do feel it on my shoulders sometimes, but I do like how flexible the back is. I think the seat is comfortable. It's got good padding. It is firm, though, and I actually really like the arms on the sale. They do have good softness and really good adjustability, and it also has Herman Miller recline. Not as deep as some of the high end chairs but it is smooth it's comfortable so i have this at a b tier the sail chair is one of those chairs that i just unfortunately don't quite fit in and because of that i have to give it a slight downgrade i think the backrest would be much more comfortable if it wasn't so short hitting into my shoulders the seat is comfortable and those armrests have good cush i'm going to give it a c tier and it's going to be a b minus overall the Cougar Terminator is probably going to make me feel the most guilty out of any chair that I've had to score simply because this chair has so much going on and there's so much material there and you can see that they put so much into it. I cannot use this thing though. The seat is brutal. The arms are brutal. I can't even use the backrest because it's way too tall for me. I don't know if it's built for someone that's 6'11". It had so much potential, but just simply being unusable all around, I have to put this as an F. It's going to be F+. Plus. Pretty much everything Ryan said is spot on. Even being a little bit taller than Ryan, I still don't fit the chair. Maybe it fits Robert better, but there was one thing that was really sticking out with this chair while well, actually it was pushed in. It was in the backrest. There's like this random hole for your middle back sweat. Maybe if you have middle back sweat, this will rank a little higher. For me, it's going to be an F tier. So I am a little taller. I don't necessarily have back sweat, but I do feel like I can almost fit in this. So I'm not going to be quite as low as the other guys. It is a bigger kind of wider seat, yet it does still have the bolsters, which is unfortunate. So it's going to be a C minus for me. Maybe I'm a little uh, pushed because I do think the looks are really cool, but it's still going to be an F. The Anthros chair is one of the newer chairs to hit the market. We've had a lot of time in it. And I got to say, I like a lot about this chair. Super comfortable in the seat. If you want something cush, they have got groundbreaking technology where you cut the hole in the seat. I don't know if that's groundbreaking technology, but it actually helps so your sit bones don't feel that pushback on the seat. That is one of the most comfortable features for me. If you're looking for lower sacral support, I think this is top of the line when it comes to that. But unfortunately, the seat is just a little bit too long in how it's shaped. I kind of feel the pressure on the backs of my legs and the armrests just kind of are rolled a little bit too much so I can't quite get my arms on them overall though again still a solid chair these are a bit nitpicks I'm going B plus I really love how you can dial in your backrest settings in the sacral region and then your upper back so you can really just fine tune it not a lot of chairs or not any chairs really can do that and like Greg said I'd like that seat how it really kind of spreads out your weight so for me it's going to be a high B if it had better arms I probably would get it up in that A tier for me, the Anthros chair is just super unique because it's one of the only high-end chairs that is actually cush on almost every aspect of the chair. So the seat and the back have really thick foam. It can be a little bit warm at times, but it's really soft, really comfortable. The dimensions don't quite hit me perfectly, so the backrest is a touch too tall. And like Greg said, that seat can be a little bit too long, making me feel the back of the front edge. I actually like the arms. They fit me well, and I think that they're nice and soft. So I'm going to have this one at a B plus, and we're at a B plus overall. The Secret Lab Omega is still out there if you want to get some cool styling, but when we're talking about comfort, it is just not there for the Omega. It has these dual pad system in the lower part and then up by the headrest, but you take those pads away and you have a super hard backrest. So looking at some of the other chairs we've seen, I have to go down to an F.
Yeah, I feel like the Omega is only for sale still because Secret Lab can't unload their final inventory of it. And so they've just had it on closeout or for sale for like three years now or something. And that should probably tell you a lot. This is just not a comfortable chair. It has the really pronounced side bolsters that are hard. It doesn't have any of the integrated lumbar support. It doesn't have the four-way arms. There's just really no reason to buy this chair. It's outdated. And in my opinion, it's still expensive. And so I'm at an F tier with this all day. The fact that it's the old school style of the chair, basically, it's what the Titan used to be and they upgrade and fixed a lot of these things. This is still carrying a lot of those bad things. The seat bolsters being one, I hate that on a chair. Still has a rock hard seat and you've got the cheap seat back lumbar and pillow. This is a tough for me, but not really F tier, F tier all around. The Han Ignition is the definition of a prototypical mid-grade C-tier chair. Nothing fancy, but nothing horrible. Nothing that's going to wow you, but nothing that's going to make you say, I hate this chair. And it comes from a big brand. I'm at a C-tier. He's completely correct. This is middle of the road. Don't expect anything to wow you. The seat's comfortable. It's got flex in the backrest, which is kind of unique. Widely adjustable, and it's in that $400 price range. This is just a decent chair. I'm going C-tier. Yeah, it does have a little bit of that stiffer front edge on the seat. I wish it had a little more of a waterfall, but it is a nice option if you're a little taller. It's a, it, it does fit larger users, but again, this is a straight C-tier chair. C for me and all three of us. The Razer Fujin Pro is actually my favorite chair from Razer. I think they actually did a pretty good job here. It's got sort of a blend between an office chair and a gaming chair, which is usually why they do better. I like the headrest. I think the armrests are pretty comfortable. The mesh backrest, same thing. And with the seat, I don't hate it. Mesh chairs, usually it's a love or hate. This one's pretty decent, so I'm going to go B tier. Yeah, I like the nice wide backrest, has good lumbar support. The reason I'm at a C plus and not higher is because there are chairs that are mesh seat backrests that are even more comfortable for about the same price. The Fujian Pro is one of those chairs that actually surprised me when it got here just because I don't love mesh seats and so I usually kind of have a disposition towards them before we get them. But I really liked the backrest, the headrest, the arms, and the seat wasn't horrible. Do I love it and would I choose to sit in it every day? No, but it is one of the better mesh seats that I use. So surprisingly, this is one of the very few mesh seat chairs that I'm going to get into the B tier, B minus from me, and we're going to be at a B minus overall. I've spent a lot of time in the original ErgoHuman leather chair. Now there's a Gen 2 with a lot of upgrades. I like the seat better. The arms are amazing. Really nice padding, good adjustability, and that lumbar support is what I really love about that chair. I'm going to give it an A-. minus. Yeah, I'm not quite as high on it as Robert. I do agree. They made a ton of really good changes from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2, fixing a lot of problems that were with that original chair. I just don't love the fact that they chose to do a pulled leather design over the frame, and I would have preferred a little bit more padding. With that said, still a comfortable chair overall. I'm going to be at a B tier. For me, the ErgoHuman Gen 2 LE9 ERG was a nice upgrade for sure. They improved pretty much the entire chair, including the recline feature. I love the way that the adjustable lumbar feature now gives you less or more depending on what your preference is. The armrests are dang near S tier, and I'm telling you, the armrests actually going in motion with the backrest makes this a really nice option if you want to recline. It's going to be an easy A for me, and it looks like it's going to be an A- minus overall. The Mavics M9 is a reskinned ergonomic chair, but they did make some changes that really caters towards gamers that I like, and that's the independent back angle adjustment, which allows you to put it really forward for those really task intensive games at a mouse and keyboard, or you can recline this thing way back, which puts it in contention against those crazy racers that go almost flat. I really like this chair. I think the seat's comfortable. I think the arms are good, and I think it has good lumbar and overall back support. I'm going to be at a B plus for the Mavics. Yeah, I think from a gaming chair perspective, this has got to be at the top of the ranks for me too. The thing I like about it most is it's very similar to the Ergo Human chair. It almost feels like it's a 1.5 before they went to Gen 2, improving upon a lot of those things for comfort. But when I look at the recline, definitely a deep recline for people who are looking for that from a gaming chair comfort-wise. The seat I like for long periods of sitting in that headrest is comfortable. So I'm going to go easy B tier. Because I do really like that flexible lumbar support. Also has a really nice recline. For me, the seat just doesn't have quite enough support. Still going to be a B and we're going to be at a B overall. The Herman Miller Aeron Remastered is a nice upgrade to that classic. This is one of those chairs that if you love mesh chairs, it's probably going to be at the top of your list. They made some huge improvements, removing the pad in the front of it compared to the old classic version. The armrests are all day S tier. And this is one of those chairs that gives you great support, whether you're upright or in full recline. This is an easy B tier for me. If I was a big time mesh lover, I could see this being A. So he set me up. I am a big time mesh lover. I would give this Aeron an S tier, but unfortunately there are some problems with the seat. I'm sitting in one right now and you do get the bolsters that kind of restrict some seating positions, but I still absolutely love this chair. The recline is amazing. The arms are amazing. So it's going to be below an S, but still a high A. 
the one thing that really holds me back from elevating this up into that A tier is just the seat. But the arms, I think they're S tier, the most comfortable arm pads I've ever used. And even though the backrest isn't flexible, which I actually really value in a chair, I think the backrest is great on the Aeron. The mesh is nice and cush, and it's got good lumbar and sacral support. The recline, top of its class out of any chair I've ever reviewed. It's just that seat. I cannot use that mesh seat for any more than a couple hours at a time. But the rest of the chair is so comfortable that I have to keep this at a B plus, and we're going to be at a B overall. The Razer Isker V1 was straight Fs overall, but the V2 is better. So they've lessened that lumbar support, so it's not so crazy so much all the time. And it still has the nice arm pads, just like all the Razer chairs. So this is going to be a D. Yeah, for me, they made three improvements. The one that Robert talked about, they got rid of the, the gas lift style lumbar that just jetted right out into your back and made it more normal style like the Titan. They also changed the pillow, which I think is a little bit more comfortable. And they changed the overall shape of the back rest instead of the top of it being a crazy curve inwards it's now just more of a prototypical racing style chair with that said it has all of the same problems as most racers except for the soft side bolsters i just don't think it's as good as the titan which i gave a d plus so this one's going to be a d minus I actually was the one to go pick this up at Best Buy for $650. I have to say it was ridiculously overpriced because there's just far too many issues with it. Even though they added a softer headrest, it uses the strap system still, which means you have far less flexibility than you would in the Titan Evo. And unfortunately, the armrests, they just don't quite fit me right. There's this weird thing happening in the seat next to the actual middle of the seat where there's like this tube plastic stuff holding the upholstery together. I don't know what it is when you sit on it. It's incredibly uncomfortable, which is odd because the seat is already uncomfortable. Comfortable. For me, this is an easy D, guys. This is a triple D. The Hanami H1 is one of those chairs that I have a tough time putting in F tier, even though I want to, because there's, like I said, those chairs that are down there that are far worse. But I have a tough time using the Hanami comfortably. The seat, that mesh design with really cupping side bolsters makes it pretty uncomfortable. I don't like the really aggressive lumbar support and the arms don't fit me great. It does have a top tier headrest though, and that's going to be the one thing that saves it from F tier. So I'm going to go D tier with this one. Yeah, unfortunately for that seat is way too narrow. It kind of like sits down in a channel. It's really awkward. I can't explain it. The armrest with them attached to the backrest kind of get in the way of the backrest as well. I know it has that feature where you can fold it down and roll it under your desk, which I can't quite figure out what that's about. It has a footrest, which is terrible. I'm going D on this one. So I do like that big headrest and it does have nice strong lumbar support. So a couple of good things there, but I don't like the seat. It has the mesh seat problems that we see so often. So it's still going to be a D plus for me, but D overall. We had high hopes for the Respawn Spire chair when it came in. It's got that cooling gel seat. It's got like what looks like a fairly decent backrest. But unfortunately, right after we got it, the backrest basically came apart, which when you looked at it, it was just a flaw in the actual way they manufacture it. In my opinion, this thing makes it almost an F tier because it's kind of unusable, but you could could still kind of use it. Not terrible, but it's not great. The problem is, is we need to introduce what they call the all 33 tier, which I think we've talked about already in this video, which is garbage tier, but so garbage that that company doesn't exist anymore. That's where we would want to put some of these chairs. So it's better than F. So I'm going D minus. Possibly the worst part about this is the arms. I'm pretty picky about having nice, comfortable arms, and the arms are just terrible. They're hard with basically no adjustment. So that's going to really downgrade it for me. The gel seat actually does feel kind of nice, but there's just so many problems that I can't even say that I love that seat. So it's going to be a D for me. So this is going to be pretty awkward because I'm going to be disagreeing with both of these guys. I actually do think that the armrests are pretty adjustable, especially for a chair at this price. They go very low, much lower than any chair that I've used at this price. This is one of the few chairs that I'd be able to use at my desk, and they do have some softness to them. So I'd actually rank the armrests pretty well on this chair. The seat, a little bit firm. It's got that cooling gel, and it's got the mini side bolsters on it to kind of replicate the gaming chair look without being all gaming chair. I wish they just had a flat seat. The backrest is okay. I'm not going to factor in the fabric pulling out. It has decent comfort. The headrest is okay. The recline's brutal though, and so I have a tough time elevating this up into what it could be, but I'm going to have this as a C minus, and we're going to be at a D overall. The Sihu M18 is just a chair that is hard all over. You see this chair advertised or pushed a lot on Amazon, but unfortunately the comfort is not there. I, like I just said about arms, I'm picky about arm pads, and the Sihu has this contour to it that makes me really not feel comfortable anywhere I put it. I had this at a D previously, but I'm moving this down to an F+.
Yeah, I've pretty much got the exact same story as Robert. I was looking at my list and I'm trying to figure out a way for me to justify the D tier ranking that I gave it on the previous list. And I'm assuming I gave it that ranking because there were other chairs on this list that I deemed to be worse than it. But that doesn't change the fact that this is a chair that I would never recommend for all the reasons that Robert said. The backrest is also really uncomfortable simply because of the way that they designed the mesh. The frame just sticks out and pokes you everywhere. This chair has no redeeming qualities for me. It's an F tier chair. Would you see who made the list again? I can't believe this chair keeps coming up on the list, <laughs> list. But honestly, there's it's so popular that it has to be on here. They sell a ton of them, even though we keep talking about exactly what they said. Armrests have a weird, awkward curve. They're rock hard. The seat is absolutely unsittable. The only reason I'm not giving it an F, like straight F, is because there's worse chairs somehow yet still in this list. We need a lower ranking than this because of this, but I'm going to give it an F+, plus, which is still an F, guys. It's an F overall. If it wasn't for the S Racer, being on this list, the GT racing chair would be the worst chair on this list, but because the arms are adjustable, it's slightly better than the S racer, but this chair is unbelievably bad. The seat is brutal. The backrest is brutal. The pillows don't help to add any comfort. They just push you out of the chair. Do not buy this thing. This is the definition of a tier below an F tier. This is F minus. The only redeeming quality with this one is I brought it in the shower for another video and it still works, but otherwise it's an F tier. <laughs> yeah, the arms are just like rock hard. The seat has that pillow that to try to make it more comfortable. This is going to be an F all across. The Hayward Fern is one of our absolute favorite chairs at B Todd for comfort. It's always ranked really highly. The only exception is when you get it with a headrest. I don't think anyone on this panel actually likes that headrest. The definite upgrade is going with that digital knit, soft all around. The seat, I really like. It might be a bit firm at first, but it's got nice, widely adjustable armrests. Overall, this chair, from a comfort standpoint, with that back that's super flexible, I'm going A. Yeah, I'm close to an S tier with this, but not quite. And part of the reason is because I do wish those arms had a little better padding, but I do love the backrest, has that flexibility. Again, I love that quilted fabric on it. And I do really love the recline. It feels really nice, not quite at the Aeron level of recline, but super comfortable chair. Again, just below an S, A+. Yeah, this chair for me very much depends on configuration, but when I get this thing configured perfectly the way that I have this chair that I'm sitting in now with no lumbar, no headrest, digital knit, for me this is S tier. I love the recline, second only to Herman Miller chairs and their highest end chairs. The seat, really good once you get it broken in, and the back is amazing. One of the two most comfortable backs that I've ever used. So for me personally, S tier on the Hayworth Fern, but it's going to be an A plus overall. My one S tier chair on this list is the Herman Miller Logitech Embody. I love so much about this chair. I love the big wide seat and I do like the arms, even though they don't have a ton of adjustment, they fit me well. I do wish they had a little more padding, which would bump it up even higher, but this is still going to be an S tier chair, great backrest, flexibility. I'll let Ryan take over. Yeah, I'm right there with Robert. This is gonna be one of my few chairs that I rank as S tier for comfort. I like everything about this chair. Most importantly, it fits me properly so I don't deal with some of the issues that some people have being at 5'9". The backrest is great. I think the lumbar support is good. The flexibility is amazing. And like Robert said, the armrests don't have great adjustability, but I actually kind of like that because they're more solid, they're more firm, and I do like they're big and flat and cush. So overall, S tier on the gaming and body, maybe it should be, it's a $2,000 chair. I'm not quite as in love with the chair as these guys. I still think it's a really solid chair. It fits me pretty well. With the only exception being in the backrest, it definitely rolls over my shoulders, which you'll see from other people who talk about it being about six foot and over. If you change that back angle a little bit, I can use it without it being a problem, but then it doesn't give me quite that full support that I like on the chair. But otherwise, armrest, seat pad, all that stuff is super comfortable. That pixelated system's awesome. I do think it's a bit of an imposter here being a gaming chair, but we'll let it slide. We're going to go eight here for me s tier overall as you can see the office chairs just dominated this matchup if you want our guide of all the top office chairs click the link in the description let us know if you like this style of tier list down in the comments